Now, we're talking about 10th, 11th, 12th, but that ain't no easy fight. I tried to tell you. I mean, you. I mean, I mean that, that's a real solid fight. And I really, and I really only give it a 60-40 chance. I give it a 60-40 for Keith Thurman. Yeah, I, I think it's probably, it's looking like that. What you think about uh, Nonito down here and that guy Jesse? Jesse Magledonia? Oh, yeah, he'll be Jesse. I know Jesse. I've seen Jesse fight twice. I mean, lot. Yeah. Jesse, he ain't got nothing to him. Nonito's going to stop him. Wow. I, I mean, it's there to, to happen because he comes in with his chin straight in the air and he just rushes in. And just start throwing a lot of fast punches, but he got vicious body shots, Sean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to put it to you like this. When I saw him fight here in Texas a couple of times, I mean, he does with the body, but the people I've seen him beat up to the body were tomato cans. And he's, you know, he beat them up pretty bad, but, uh, I don't know. I just see, matter of fact, don't I, matter of fact, I think, I got an old interview I did with him too, I think. But he just, unless he's improved, really improved in the last year and a half, because it's been at least a year and a half since the last time I seen him fight, I just, I'm just not really impressed to see him. I just don't see nothing right now with him beating Dan, with uh, Nanita. Oh. I mean, he might fool me, I just don't see it. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, well, he can accept the one point nine million dollars that they offered him, or go to a purse bid. So I think he's gonna accept the one point nine million dollars. He was just trying to, I guess, find some wiggle room and see if it'll work. So they gave him to the twenty second as a deadline to accept to go to purse bid. I would just take the one point nine million dollars. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it was gonna be seventy. Seventy five, twenty five. Right, because that's the real. Seventy five, twenty five. It don't matter. If he was the champion, period, 75-25 has always been that crazy split for the champion because everybody assumed the champion is the biggest star of the sport. When well, no, that, well, no that, that's what I'm saying with the WBC. The reason why they gave him that is because they actually, and I hate this, that they came out with what's called a Super World Champion. They got Golovkin as the Super World Champion, and Danny is the regular World Champion. I mean, Danny technically is the world champ, but they created that super world champion, and because of that, Golovkin gets the 75 split because he's the super world champion. Well, they both they both have the same belt. Yeah, that's that's the WBA. Yeah, that's the WBA yep. involvement. But the thing is, Golovkin's gonna have the upper hand because the one that Jacobs got is, you know. Basically manufactured. Yeah. He beat Quillen. Well, it, does, it, it doesn't matter. He's going to knock out uh, Danny Jacobs anyway. Yeah, well, it's all about what round that's going to go down there. But yeah, he should. <laughs> he should. So 1.9 uh, 1. 1. million. 1.9, like, 1. yep. That should be it. Well, at least Jacobs get to punch him in the face a couple of times, hopefully, before he goes to sleep. <laughs> But he's a miracle man. Maybe um, a miracle will happen, you know? Miracle on 41st Street. Kev, they better not play that angle again. If he can beat Cancer, he can beat Triple G. I'm like, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> oh, you know that's coming. But, man, that dude who was on that line last night, Sean. That what man had to be What I don't know who from? this guy was from, what city, or what state, but he was wonderful. He was, I'm here for the whole show. I'm here all the way tonight. So he's definitely oh, on the wow. West Coast somewhere. Because he was talking oh, about wow. the show being over at 9. So I'm like, yeah, he's two hours behind, so he on the West Coast somewhere. But that guy was hilarious. What, what, else, what, what else he had you cracking up about? Everything he only wanted to talk about, Danny Garcia fighting Sammy Vargas. <laughs> <laughs> that was the biggest thing of the day, Shaw. He had me cracking up. He was he needs to be thrown in jail. This is a tilt murder. He did this to Sulka. How many times must we see this? This guy could die in that ring. Why is he fighting? <laughs> He's bummed. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm tired of it. He's fighting bum out the bum out the bum. Oh, Danny Garcia is the worst champion. I tried to give him credit because he fought Batista, but he's let me down. I mean, he was losing it, man. He was cracking me up, Sean. I listened to this guy rant for about 20 minutes straight about Danny Garcia. It was hilarious. Each, I never got bored. <laughs> Oh, man. What was Chris doing? Chris was egging him on again. Yeah, Chris was like, yeah, well, you know, you got him, Chris. Why are you egging this guy on? <laughs> I'm like, you know Danny Garcia fought. He fought Lamar Peterson. He fought... Um, Don't forget about Lucas Matisse. Matisse. He fought even Herrera is tough. We know that everybody yep. know that now. He fought Herrera. He's a tough fight, and he fought the Ghost. He was like, yeah, yeah but he threw Polly Molinaji in the middle of that. That's a that's kind. Of, I'm like, well, Polly got a name. Polly's name was just as big as his. Yep. <laughs> hey, look, and they keep forgetting about. And even though nobody, everybody thinks he's a bum. Gotta remember, uh, and, uh, he beat up and knocked out Amir Khan when people didn't give him a chance. Yep. Khan was the favorite, you know, and that's when people finally started noticing him. And when he knocked out Khan, and I was on the phone with you when we was watching that, and I was like, yep, it's coming. Yeah. Boom, there and, it is. And, look, and they can't forget his coming out party. Even though the guy was aged, still, his coming out parties when he stopped Eric Morales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everybody kind of I mean, I mean so, so he's got some, some names on his resume. Not like he's fought bombs his whole life. Exactly. But the thing is... Danny Garcia is fighting Sammy Vargas for a tuna for his fight to fight Keith Thurman, which is already signed. That was the big news that they was working on, but we already know they've been working on this for months. We've talked about it on the show. So, See, what people, so what people fail to realize is that people don't realize that boxing and Janet Jackson have a lot in common. <laughs> what have you done for me lately, right? Exactly. Oh my that's god! A, that, that's how boxing is, right? Don't but this is what I, I don't anything. understand, Sean. I'm like you, y'all praise. I'm like he's fighting Keith Thurman. This is the fight everybody want to see: Keith Thurman and uh, Danny Garcia fight. I'm yeah. like, what? What is the problem? What he's doing before that? Everything else is a tune-up. People, people that had tune-up fights right before a big fight, and I'm like, y'all just watched Andre Ward fight a complete bomb. A complete bum. This guy was shouldn't even had on boxing gloves. I'm wondering why did this even appear on HBO? And this, I'm like, but he's fighting Kovalev. So they, everybody's like, well, he's fighting Kovalev, so it don't even matter. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, he's fighting Kovalev. It's a tune-up fight. I get it, but you ain't gonna get nothing fighting this guy. I guess he just wanted to have some rounds in the ring, but I'm like, you risking getting hurt. Now this fight here. I doubt Danny get a cut or anything. Hopefully get the guy out of there within four rounds. You know, but I guess it's just to keep him active to get some rounds in because uh, this guy could... I have no idea how this guy would help him get ready for Keith though. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. he don't even have punching power. So, the only thing he's risking is maybe getting a headbutt. And Danny Garcia yeah. suffered a lot of headbutts and cuts. I mean, and I mean a lot but, of risk. but even but even still, Kev, that fight's not gonna be until March. Even if he did, I probably I personally think you'll have enough time to heal up by that time. Yeah, I mean of course. I'm I'm hoping that. But I'm glad that they got the fight made. So right. that's my main concern, that they got that fight made a hundred percent. That's like the best thing, best news. Anything anybody's gotten. Everybody don't even want to talk about the fight. They want to talk about Sammy Vargas. <laughs> oh, well, why hey, are you arguing about the tune-up? <laughs> hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Kevin, let me ask you this. If Bob Arum and Al Heyman can put some of these fights together, how would you feel Terrence Crawford at 147 fighting Errol Spence at 147? That's not a good fight for either guy right now. Terrence Crawford has not had a welterweight fight yet. That would be that would just be the wrong idea. But that'll be a it'll be a good chess match to watch. 
Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Sean Porter versus Errol Spence next. Sean Porter versus Errol Spence? Yeah, I mean, that could happen, but Porter don't want that fight. The fight he want is a rematch between Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman. So he's ready to fight a tune-up just to wait for the winner of that fight. Yeah, the reason I asked you about Kel Brook is because I'm hearing, and that's the mirror times moving to 154, I'm hearing from Eddie Hearn and them that they're close to making the uh, American versus Kel Brook in the UK. But I don't know what weight class. If that fight happens, weight doesn't even make a difference. Kell Brook will knock out Amir Khan within a few rounds. Well, see. we know that, but we know Amir Khan ain't going to want to give up a lot of weight. He'll probably want 150 pounds. Khan will take this him. negotiation to the brink. He's probably already got everybody here going great. Because you got to deal with all Khan lawyers and all the Khan men that's there. And I don't even think they should do the fight. Amir Khan brings absolutely zero to the table. Except for over in the UK, it'll be official that now he's nothing but dog dude. Some you step on outside of the, on the street. That's all Amir Khan is. He's been overrated his entire boxing career. And he's been getting away with stealing people's money. I just hope uh, Kel Brook don't have a detached rent or nothing that serious, right? I hope it's uh, over the bone goes good. Nah, he's alright. They already did the surgery. It's already recovered and fine. He'll be back in full contact before you know it. So. So, are we going to get suicidal? Are we going to get suicidal H and Bronner versus Ricky Burns now? I don't know, man. I, now they talking about his account might have been hacked or something, and, and he's all right. I, I'm, this is like an alcoholic, Sean. This is yep. what you don't give them an audience. The same thing they say, don't give alcoholics an audience. Don't give people who got millions of dollars, like he sent me the thing about Wack Honey. Like Wayne Hunter said about him. I mean, look, you got millions of dollars. There's people with plenty of problems, greater problems than you. You know, they lost their job. They can't feed their family. They have no money. The rent's due. They don't have no idea where they're going to be. They're, these are the type of people that might be suicidal, even though I still think that's no reason to kill yourself at all. Yeah, they ain't so much to kill yourself and stop wasting air. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you make it... it, it it makes people upset, Sean. Yeah. I mean, I know it, it just irritates me to hear something like that. I'm like, you got yeah. five kids out there, you gonna scar for life. I'm like, my two friends, they brothers, they lost their mother. She killed, she killed herself, and that messed their life up completely. Yeah. For years, even today, they still haunted by the fact that they don't understand why they went to school and came back one day and their mother killed themselves. And they don't know why it happened. And I'm like, they got money to law. All the money in the world. And yep. and they were just wasting it. It had no meaning to them. They were just totally a mess. One of the sons, right. he kept trying to kill, commit suicide himself. He was so depressed. He don't know. He, they whole teenage years growing up was a mess. The, it was a miracle now that they are even functional. Right. But going through that period, they were a mess. They never had an answer for anything. Right. They didn't know why she did it. And just for that fact alone, people don't know how selfish the act actually is. You're not helping anybody by killing yourself. Right, right, exactly. You're not, all you're doing is running away from a burden. Like I told you, two people at our job, our job is so stress driven. When, when we was working at that place, people just killed themselves. When when they couldn't get sales and everything else, that lady, she had all this IRS problems and all this stuff. She just killed herself. She couldn't even face it. Damn. I'm like, IRS problems? And she just killed herself? Like, yeah, man, she committed suicide. And I just found this out two weeks ago. Two two people that we worked with just killed themselves. 
I was like, man, sell, sell, sell. But yeah, Deontay Wilder got to fight the winner of the Stavern and Provecan fight. No, nobody wants to see him fight Stavern again. Well, if Provecan win, then there you go. But I want to I I I see him face the winner of uh, Anthony Joshua, Vladimir Pisto. That's what I want to see. Mm. Well, Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua and Clisco is not even a done fight yet. And then you got uh, Louise Ortiz who did the smart thing by going over to Golden Boy. I mean, getting away from Golden Boy and going over there with Eddie Hearn where all the heavyweights are so he can get some yeah. fights. That was the smartest thing he did was ask for a release. Because Golden Boy would have hold him because they don't have nobody for him. We're going to bring this Mexican guy. He's a heavyweight. He's officially 280 pounds. In Mexico, he's 3,001. So we're going to bring him over here. It's like, who is this guy, Oscar? Some guy coming in there chewing, eating a torta, talking about some, he knocked out <laughs> heavyweights in Mexico. I knocked out Julio, man. He's 5'2", 380 pounds. <laughs> we went one round, man. Booga, Gato. <laughs> It's like he's got a devastating left hook. Don't judge him by how he looks. <laughs> oh God! It's going to be exciting. <laughs> oh man! So, that's crazy. I can see something like that happening too. Nah, you know what I mean that's what was going to happen until he said, "I'm out." <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I can see Golden Boy doing it. Yeah, they probably pitched him. You don't have to leave. We'll have you fights. <laughs> and he got up out of there. So. I'm interested in this. Uh, one of the fights I'm really interested in is Mama Checker versus Nicholas Walters. Oh, yeah, of course. Everybody's waiting on that because it's like, can he survive the axe? Lomacheco and can Lomacheco's speed be enough? Because his speed work is incredible. Yep. So he'll always beat Nicholas to the spot. You know what's going to be the determining factor? It's going to be the determining factor, Kev. If Nicholas Walters is in training camp to lose weight right now, or is he in training camp for conditioning? He's doing but both. He's, there, he's got oh, enough God. time. But it depends on, he's going to be so rusty because he's been out the ring for so long. You know, the natural, the rust is going to be there for the uh, first couple of rounds. But and here's he the thing. And he, and, and he, he, can't, dwell on that. he can't dwell on that Danita Donaire win because Danita and Lama Checker are totally two different fighters. No, it's not about that anyway. It's not like he, he didn't use a style to beat them anyway. He used power. And that's yep. it. His body punching is hard, and his his right hand chops down like a, like an axe. That's basically yep. all he's gonna do. Is he's gonna counter punch whenever Lomachenko comes in. And the fact that they're fighting at a higher weight than it originally was planned, so that plays into both guys' favor. I think he's coming at one thirty, right? Yep. So I'm happy they I'm I'm just happy they got the boxing fights going again, man. They yeah. breaking the engine back up. Like I was telling this guy, I'm like, dude, they don't fight. Danny Garcia's fighting on TV. It's for free. They're not charging you for this. I'm like, Pacquiao charged you money to see Chris Algieri. You had to pay on pay per view to see him fight Chris Algieri. Yeah, I think this was gonna be on Spike. Spike T V. Yeah, I'm like, this is like a free fight. And Kevin, it's so funny because absolutely, I don't know not one person that's talking about Pacquiao versus Vargas. Because it's a, it's October the what thirteenth. <laughs> that fight ain't gonna get discussed until the week before the fight. That's why you you haven't seen any promotion for it either. No promotion for that fight is gonna kick off until the week of the fight. That's 
what I'm gonna hear from everybody. Yeah. So today I think uh, GH3 is supposed to be talking with uh, Sean Simpson. So we'll see how that's going oh. with Tony. Oh, Vito, Vito and him. Yeah. I told him you know him. I'm like, well, Sean don't know him, but I'm like, let me not bring Sean into this. <laughs> Tony. Oh yeah, because I couldn't take Tony not the way you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's why I said, I said, let me not bring Sean into this too quick. Because I know, yeah, Tony, Tony will call you about a thousand times a day. You'll be in the middle of calls and here it comes. Yeah. Alright, well, 